God first spoke. He said, let there be light, and there was light. It is the first declaration from God on his creation, the thing that he had made, and it started off good. Now, one thing that really strikes us as we read that God spoke here in Genesis 1 and created light is that we understand light today to be identified and associated with the sun. And the moon reflects the light of the sun, and also the stars give some light at night in the night sky. We identify light with light bearers, the celestial bodies of the sun, moon, and stars. And yet, this is day one, and it will not be until the fourth day that God creates the sun, moon, and stars. But he has already created light. And we wonder, well, how could God do that? How could he create light without the sun? Doesn't the sun give the light that the world experiences today? And the answer is yes. Well, how could God have created light first before the sun? And the answer is that he did. It's a fact. This is how he began his creation. He first created light. Now, why would God do this? Why would he start with the creation of light? Well, perhaps an answer could be with the spiritual meaning of light. As we saw, darkness relates to sin. It relates to the judgment of God upon sin. And so God began the creation and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That is, he's looking ahead to mankind's sin and their need of salvation. And yet before the world began, God had already worked out a plan of salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ was already the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And he was already the day, as the Bible calls him. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. He is the light that forms the basis of the day of salvation. And Christ has already died and risen from the dead to be declared the Son of God. And as the Son, he spoke and created the worlds. He created the earth. He created the heavens. He created all things. And he did it by already making payment for sins. That's how he could be called the Son via or through the resurrection of the dead. And so here, interestingly enough, God has developed a salvation program where the light who is Christ, God ties light with salvation in many places. For instance, let's look at Psalm 27, verse 1. Jehovah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? We know in Isaiah 9, verse 2, they that sat in darkness saw a great light. And that was a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ as he would later enter into the world. Or we looked at this a couple of times. So let's go to John 1. And we see as God speaks of the word being in the beginning and the word was God. It says in verse 3, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And also, we saw the verse in our last study in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, where God ties the idea of light shining in darkness to the salvation in Christ. It says in that verse, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And Psalm 80 and its references to cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. We see in many places where God relates light to salvation. Well, according to the Bible, Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That means he took the sins of his elect upon himself, died for those sins, and thereby guaranteed the salvation of each one that he died for. It's a certain thing. It's absolute. 
God died in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ for these people. Their sins were paid for. They are now forgiven all sins and they receive eternal life. So we have the light of salvation before the world begins and then sin will come. And then the word of God is given to man. And just like God first created light and then later created light bearers and attached the light to the light bearers, so too, spiritually, God first makes the light of salvation through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus and his successful conquering of death by rising from the dead. And then later, God will attach the light to the word of God, the Bible. He'll attach the light to the scriptures, to the word in which the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The light has already existed before the world was, but now in time, in history, God ties that salvation light to his word and also ties it to the person of the Lord Jesus, who will later in time and later in history enter into the world and he will be called the light of the world. Well, the light has already existed from the beginning. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. Yet at a later point, then Jesus enters in. He's born of the Virgin Mary and he takes upon himself a human nature and he walks amongst men and God ties the light to the person of the Lord Jesus. And all he does is to show forth the light that's to manifest. And that's what the Bible says light is able to do. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, because it has an interesting statement about darkness, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. There again is another verse tying light to salvation. Rising from the dead, and Christ gives light. But notice verse 13 of Ephesians 5. Whatsoever does make manifest is light. And what was the purpose for Jesus to enter into the world and to show forth, to demonstrate the things that he had done from the foundation in being the lamb slain at that point? Well, the Bible says it was to make manifest that he had died for the sins of his people, that he had made payment already. And what makes manifest is light. He now is a light bearer. God has tied the light to the person of the Lord Jesus, although the light previously existed. You see, it is actually a wonderful picture. It's a beautiful illustration of what God has done spiritually. We know that the Bible does call the word of God light in Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So both the word of God and Christ are the light bearers. Christ, when he comes and enters into the world, is a light bearer. They are light bearers that come after the light has already existed. The light that was there at the very beginning. The light that enables God to have an immediate salvation program at the ready as soon as Adam and Eve sin. And just like God first created light and then later created light bearers and attached the light to the light bearers, so too spiritually God first makes the light of salvation through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus and his successful conquering of death by rising from the dead. And then later 
God will attach the light to the Word of God, the Bible. He'll attach the light to the Scriptures, to the Word in which the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. 